Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I'm talking about social networking liars. Social networking liars. And those of you all who are familiar with social media and all of the latest sites nowadays, you know that there's a lot of lying that takes place if you are discerning. God exposes the foolish. He exposes those who think that they're getting away with all sorts of activity online. I remember having a conversation with someone about dating websites and how people will put up things on dating profile pages to make it look like they're not married, to make it look like they don't have any children, to even photo shop their uh photographs to make them look like they are a little bit lighter uh, to make them look like they don't weigh as much as they once did these deceivers the Lord abhors because these individuals are those who are married but yet they deceive and tell people in their photographs and in their preferences that they're not These are people that are on sites like Facebook and they put up photographs and they deceive the public and pretend as if they just took photographs when in fact they're old. And if you can pay close attention to the way the folks look, you can clearly see that those aren't recent pictures. The environments even are a farce. They will put up photographs from a different time period, a different location, and not their current location. And meanwhile, the Facebook audience or the folks who are on the various dating websites will give them comments and puff them up a bit, right? The social media sites as well as dating websites are playgrounds for people with personality disorders, those who are self-absorbed, self-important, narcissist type. Social media is not a place for individuals who are looking for someone, someone who is a Christian, okay? You might possibly get lucky, I won't say blessed, get lucky meeting someone, but is that person really honest is what you should be asking yourself. You should be checking out their friend list. You should be checking out their relatives. You should be talking with their mutual friends and finding out the truth. Some people question what they're seeing. Some people say, isn't that so-and-so and why is he on this site? Or why is she over here talking to these different men? Some people will go on their favorite social networking sites and they'll find out that Someone hasn't posted any photographs of their spouse, that someone has children, and yet you never see any photos, or maybe you see one or two, and they're very old. Individuals will remain connected to these people in the hopes of what? In the hopes of possibly landing someone if they should break up with a partner. People stay on these sites in the hopes of what? To get their narcissistic supply, their egos rubbed. Some of these people will claim that they're believers when in fact they are so far away from God. They are lukewarm, they're apostates, they're backsliders. They will say that, oh, I'm not very active, honey, on the site. And you find out there's a little bit more going on besides just liking pictures. There is a hope. There's a hope that There will be some type of connection made. And some people, unfortunately, are down low. And it's not even about women or men. They've got their fetishes. They've got people who are of the same sex that they're looking at while they're on their sites. And others, they are looking at children, unfortunately. Looking at the friend list of young relatives and checking out young girls or young boys and God sees these things and what do you think is going to happen to an individual who's walking in darkness 
What do you think is going to happen over time to an individual who spent much of his or her life being deceptive? What do you think is going to happen to individuals who think that they are getting away with much? Well, being that I have witnessed quite a few things happen to some people over the course of my years, I can tell you that the ending is the same for the fake believer, for the backslider, for the apostate. For the unbeliever, it's pretty much the same. When you mess with children of light, when you are not doing what God wants you to do, when you have strayed so far away from the faith and you are recruiting other people to be like you, there is some ugliness ahead. Some people are a little bit closer to the Lord than we think. Some people are prayer warriors. Some people have given up much. I remember one of my relatives who's no longer with us gave up much just to do right. And then there were others that were in the process of working before they closed their eyes, working on themselves, working on doing right by others. I see a man as I speak who has spent years on and off, sometimes being that one that does right, and other times being that one that is no different than the worldly, young, rebellious males in this world. And I see his future struggle, and I see the tears rolling down his eyes, because he had the opportunity to do right, and he didn't. I see those who are busybody types. I see how they're going through their share of issues because they just can't seem to keep their mouths closed in people's business and wishing the worst for them. I also see Those young women, the young women who know, who know full well that they are not supposed to be involved with people who are already committed and that they are not to even wish to be with those who are already committed. And I see these folks and the Lord reminds me of times where I was rebellious and I really didn't care and I was doing what I wanted. But can I tell you from personal experience that at some point you reap what you sow? Can I tell you that when you are doing some things that are out of fellowship with the Lord, you reap what you sow? Can I tell you that even if you're an unbeliever, you are still going to deal with some consequences as a result of your actions those of us who have been on dark paths know that there's nothing but ugliness that comes we have lost our money we have lost our families we have lost much over the course of our years and it was God's grace it was his mercy that brought us through that is why some of us were on a slow rise back up again after many storms. That is why some of us have the strength to be able to endure because of God, because of the life lessons learned and how we went through so much that we're not about to go back down that path again. But those that are those social media hogs, social media whores, social media predators, social media stalkers, Those that have fallen so far away from the Lord. So much, so much is going to take place in the future. And so what we do is we pray. We pray for people that they will turn from their ugly ways. The issues that many of these people have isn't with the wives. It isn't with the husbands. It's not with the best friends or the relatives. The issues that they have is with God. They're not men and women of integrity. They're dishonest. They do devious things. They are unrighteous. They're ungodly. 
And if they don't confess sin and repent, spiritual warfare is going to come. And when spiritual warfare comes, people get sick, people die, people lose much. The war isn't with most of the time the flesh. Usually the war comes with spirits. Many, many spirits, demonic spirits, spirits that say, oh, so you were once a Christian. Well, welcome back. We're going to have our way with you. We're going to get you for old and new. We're going to get you for those times that you were preaching, those times that you were talking to people about God and salvation. And we're going to get you. We're going to get you for those times that you sat up there and you pretended like you were someone's friend, someone's confident. You were talking about how much you loved folks and how you wanted to be respected and appreciated. We're going to get you for those times because those things that you said had some godly speech to it. And so what happens is there's a lot of negativity that falls on these people for playing two sides of the fence, for being, as my grandmother once said, two faced. They wear two faces. They have a mask. I have a history of attracting people with many faces. I don't know why this is. Some of these people mean well. They are children of light, working really hard to keep up with the things that God wants them to do. And then I attract those that have two faces that are of darkness. And they're not even thinking too much about the Lord. And they're not trying to do all that they're supposed to. After a while, when you keep attracting the same types of folks, you start to know them, you start to read them, and you recognize when their spiritual butt whippings are kicking in. And they try, they try to escape the butt whippings, but they still come anyway. People who are on a lot of these different sites are wearing two faces, my friend. And you've got to be discerning, and you've got to step up. And trust in the Lord and not fall, pray, not be caught up in their charm, in their sweet talk, in their likes, in their comments, and in their false images. They are your family members that do this sort of thing. They are your friends. They are your co-workers. They are people that wear one side on social media and are totally different offline. These are people, some of them, that don't appreciate their families. That's why they run to the Internet and they spend so much time. Look at how many times they show up. Look at how frequently they post. Look at some of the images that they put up and notice that they're inconsistent or there's something a bit off about them. And of course, they're not going to tell you the truth because they're more concerned about likes and being noticed. And presenting themselves as being something that they're really not. Spend some time offline. And learn these people. Learn them through the people that they associate with. Ask the kind of questions about those individuals. That you choose to do business with. Or who keep wanting something from you. Find out who they know. Find out what the mutual friends are saying. Find out what the relatives are saying. And don't be ashamed, don't be nervous, and don't be concerned. There are some folks that want to tell you the truth. My audios are filled with a lot of truth. My audios are filled with a lot of exposing. And my audios are audios that are anointed and appointed by the one true God, Jesus Christ. Get your your head out of the sand. And start walking in the light. Be real with yourself. And also be real with those folks who call themselves so-called Christian. I thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to listen. Please do check the description box for anything that might be of interest. You've been listening to YouTube NM Enterprise 7. To God be the glory.